Welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast, your number one source of all things bodybuilding. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes. Now, here's your host, Leroy Rollins. All right, brother. Let's uh, let's kick this off, man. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, tell everybody what you're all about, what you do, and everything in between. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Well, I mean, honestly, my whole life is bodybuilding. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I sit at home, I eat my food, I play my video games, I go to the gym. That's it. Like, <laughs> that's sick. that's all. Like, it just works out that way because when you're like super shredded all the time and you have to pound the food down, like the only way you're gonna do it is staying at home and eating. You know. So. Yep. So, like, pretty pretty antisocial, pretty much a loner a lot of the time, or what? Um, I wouldn't say that. No, I actually, I have a lot of people over, typically. Yep, yep. Or just uh, sit there and entertain me while I eat, or, That's <laughs> perfect. or sit, whatever else, you know. That's sick. I try to go out, but keep the party partying to a minimum just because yeah for sure for sure it's not uh not conducive to the gains that's for absolutely sure. <laughs> um so you are you're 19 now correct yeah 19 now <laughs> okay so you're still so damn young now run me through the the competition <laughs> history just uh quickly for the listeners me and this guy did it would have been provincials back in the yeah, day right. <laughs> back when they had it back yeah back when there was provincials up here in canada so that was august 2016 so frig almost three years yeah. ago um so tell me tell me about you know that show the show before that because how many have you done now total um so now i've done three total three total shows this okay is, um, i'm going on my fourth show now but yep okay so my first show would have been the henderson thorn natural classic 2015 i believe okay and i was 15 years old when i did that one Wow, so young. <laughs> that one, uh, oh yeah, that was just for an experience though, you know, test yep. the waters. Yep. I had no idea what I was doing, didn't dive into the show, like maintain my training to the best of my ability, whatever that was at the time. Sure. And before stepping on stage, my uh, diuretic, if you will, was red wine, so. <laughs> man, <laughs> pound and wine I backstage. There, man, I'm telling you, I was smiling something fierce. It was hilarious. <laughs> like, my posing was, I don't know what you would call it. Like, I was doing all these, like, magical things with my hands and hyperextending my back. And, I like uh, it. It was something else, but, I mean, I was 15 and people were just proud to see me up there. And, and was like, that men's physique? That was men's physique, yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> they didn't actually have teenage physique at the time. Okay, so it was a teen class. Did you only do teen? Um, no, so that year I did men's, and then the next year I I started working with uh, Josh Leo, Team Hard. So we prepared for uh, Stephanie Worsfold Classic 2016. Okay. So that show we did uh, teen, junior, and men's. We took first in all three, except uh, not the overall, but the guy who won the overall looked insane, like full shredded, yep. older dude too, and like he deserved it for sure. So you won all three classes? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. It was. I, I did not expect to win all three classes. I'm not going to lie. Like I was confident with what I was bringing to the stage because something completely different from the first show for sure. Right. And I had Aaron Legend doing my posing. I had Josh behind me with my diet. Oh, wow. So I was confident. But yeah, I you had a team. to win, especially at such a young age. For sure, for so sure. Good. <laughs> so tell me about, so we'll call that the first show you took seriously, obviously. So tell me about that first prep that was like a full-on prep. How long were you? What was it like? All that good stuff. Yeah, this is yeah, this is the funny part. Like <laughs> everyone asked me this, like, how long do I prep for a show? And like I really didn't prep all that much because again, like my metabolism's so fast, my body fat's always low. Yeah. It was just a matter of maintaining that fullness, so keeping the carbs high, keeping the protein high yep. into the show. And, like, even the days before the show, like, I would water load instead of dehydrate. Like, yeah, yeah. just things to get me super-duper flat but still maintain that fullness, you know. The fullness was the priority. Right. Because the conditioning's there, you know. Sure. Like, it's just a matter of mu muscularity and size. And yeah. that's always going to be the eternal struggle. Yeah, how much you can keep on your frame. Exactly. That's sweet. So, as far as, like uh, – like losing weight and getting shredded goes like did you did you lose uh, a significant amount of weight or what <laughs> uh i wouldn't say so like i 
I dropped maybe five pounds, five ten tops, tops. Like, no, no, I wouldn't say ten. I'd say five tops. Like, and that would be fat, right? If anything, like. <laughs> Just a little bit of water, a little bit of fat, like whatever's left, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. Okay, so swamped it there, took all three, then 2017, or no, I guess it was Provincial. So when was this show then? When was that first show? So the first show, that was uh, May that same year. Oh, okay. So then you did May to August. Yeah, exactly. So, so did you just basically hold conditioning then till August? Um. Yeah, honestly, like... Going from regionals to provincials, like I wasn't too proud of what I actually brought to provincials, and the judges said it too. Like, my he said my conditioning, my fullness, it was much better at my regional show. Right. And it's funny because like I was 16 at that show and turned 17 for provincials. You know, you expect to bring something better, but yeah, it's a learning experience, right? So yeah, I mean, yeah. I learned from that show. I learned like what doesn't work with my body, and it's really I really need to make sure I maintain that fullness and maintain the diet properly so that I come in super diced and super full. And then there's that fine line between spilling over and yep. coming in full, especially when you're lean all the time. Like it's very difficult, but <laughs> yeah, for sure. Are you a person that has to carb up a lot? Like do you have to eat a lot of 100%, food? hundred percent. My life is carbs, rice, <laughs> pasta, you name it. Yeah. Basmati so and Jasmine. For sure. Whole wheat. No, actually, I, I actually stay away from whole wheat just because the nutritional difference, it's so, like, so minute. It's not even worth the transition. Right. I like my good tasting food as well. You're not going to eat something that doesn't taste good, right? So. No, exactly. For sure, for sure. So when you uh, carved up, like, run me through the process from, like, Friday till Saturday on stage. Yeah, the process. Um, so we got, I think I got, a, I got to London around, like, is this for the London show or provincial? Yeah, yeah prov go provincials. You're, you're provincial, most recent one. Okay. Um, I got there mid-afternoon, I'd say. Yep. Um, right off the bat, it's a Wendy's baked potato. <laughs> okay, okay. My, yeah, that was my uh, method of success, the Wendy's baked potato and then the, also just like the four-ounce patties that they serve. Sure. I used to work at Wendy's, so I know exactly <laughs> how much their patties weigh. I know the junior's two ounce, the main is four. Oh, my so God. I, knew I needed four ounces, so I just took that patty. and yeah. Perfect portion, yeah. even though um, maybe it's not the best choice of meat. It's yeah, still, yeah. It's greasy. It makes me look super vascular, so. We'll take it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's sweet. So I had that. So I had that, and then the night before was – uh, honestly, I was surprised. Like I expected to be dehydrating at that point, but I actually did a water load just so I would wake up super flat the next day. I right. think that's where I messed up just because I consumed a crap ton of water. Like I think I was over six liters. Oh, wow. Just, and it, it was just like I was pissing out, pissing it all out like a racehorse. And no doubt, no doubt. All night. It was bad. <laughs> but my uh, I didn't actually do that as much for my regional show. My regional show was more about uh, coming in a bit more dehydrated, a bit more, uh, but still with the carbs high. Yeah. So I think that's where I made the mistake. Right. Yeah. You live and you learn, right? You learn what works for your body, what doesn't. Absolutely. And I mean, like, I'm still super young and even though I'm in school and I'm learning everything, like my nutrition is still rusty. Like yep. my training, my knowledge, it's still growing. Right. So for sure. So talk to me about, uh, you know, your, your training leading into the prep. Like, did you do a lot of cardio? Was it, uh, push, oh, pull, legs, I don't upper, touch the lower. Treadmill, man. <laughs> What's that? Everything was high volume, uh, high intensity. A lot of um, variations like split sets, supersets, drop sets, anything to shock the body and to re refrain me from actually plateauing and sure. keeping my muscles activated in that hypertrophy state. Right. Yep. So anything to like a lot of uh, mainly high volume, high carb. Those are the. The key fundamental like approaches to my plan. That's how you roll. So how'd you split your training up? Did you have uh, body part specific days or, or what? Um, yeah, like uh, my chest in particular has always been a weak point, like from top to bottom. So really hitting that chest, trying to get a little bit more fullness in the lower lats, a bit of density in the traps. Yep. Those were like the main areas of concern, but really just high volume to improve overall muscularity. Right. I, I, I like, I'm not, I, I truly believe like genetically I'm gifted and I have 
the shape, everything's in proportion. Yep, Where yep. Your the, frame is there. It's just a matter of really bringing out that muscularity, and that's just what's going to take time, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's the that's the game of it, right? Is how patient are you? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> so sometimes talk, you test that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So talk to me about uh, diet then over you know the last two years of competing and stuff. So over the last two years, it's very, very, very repetitious, like yep. typical bodybuilder food. You know, your chicken breasts, lean turkey. Yeah. Um, but I, I like basmati or even minute rice. Is like even though it does have the odd preservative, I like minute rice just for the efficiency of it. Yeah, same here. I'm like Uncle Ben's. Like boil the water, throw the rice in. You're Absolutely. Good. And like, yeah. You could, like if you wanted, you could just nuke it and it's ready. Like, yeah, exactly. It's there, you know, like. Anything to be lazy, like pre-cooked chicken, Costco. <laughs> We're all about efficiency. <laughs> it's expensive, but it's worth it. You know? Yeah. Like, and For then sure. supplement stack, like, again, high carb. So I love Vitargo. really brings out fullness in my body. I find it fills out my muscles, gives me a good pump. Too. Okay. So you take that what, intra? Intra just... and post-workout. I do a scoop each, so I split them up. Because typically a serving is two scoops, right? Right, right. So, okay. Yeah, that'll be, and then intro as well, I combine that with branch chain amino acids, and then I think, um, yeah, branch chain and then creatine monohydrate as well. Do you That's take, do you workout. take like a protein powder as well, or do you try to get it from food? Um, like, I, I do both because, like, fundamentally, supplements and nutrition, like, I've learned that they are equal, like, but it is better, it is more beneficial to get your nutrients from whole foods and whole sources, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, if you can eat it, then that's the thing, right? I'm going to eat my food and supplement on top because yep. it's the most practical, right? Yep, yep, that's the that's the smart approach, I think, generally mm -hmm. speaking, right? Absolutely, but I mean, if, you're, if I'm having an off day where I'm lacking a certain macro, you know, like, I'll pound a supplement just because I'm lazy. But. Yep, just to get it. <laughs> You got to treat yourself here and there, delegate. <laughs> For sure. So do you, uh, are you following like, uh, okay, here's X number of calories, here's my macros, hit them every day, or are you a little looser with it? Like what's your, um, what's your approach that way? I'm typically more looser with it just because it, I, like if I obsess over every little element of yeah. my diet, it's, I'm just going to become obsessive. And yeah, you're going to lose your mind. Like in the long run, that's it's a cyclical cycle that's not practical, right? So. Yeah. For me, it's it's just a matter of what's on the plan. If I eat it, I did good. If I didn't eat it, well, toughen up and do better next time. You know? Yeah, it's because not the end of the world. Exactly. I mean, you miss a meal, so be it. Like sometimes, like that, that's the lesson I'm still learning. It's like if you miss one meal, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like, you still have a roof over your head. Like oh yeah, food on your table, you're clothed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people people get too like freaked out about shit like that, eh? And it's like Absolutely. like I've got one young client who's like he's 16 and he's super intense about everything and I'm like like he's, <laughs> he's weighing out like like if he wants to have like ketchup with his chicken, like he, <laughs> he weighs out his ketchup. I'm like, "Bro, just a few squirts and just you're good." Use it, bro. It's a condiment. Yeah, like relax, but <laughs> I mean, right? in the long run it'll probably pay him off cuz he'll be like like he'll be that guy that goes to the extra lengths, Absolutely. right? So when it matters, it'll probably count. But right now, I'm like, just eat what you can, train hard, and keep Absolutely. going. Absolutely. Just the fact of the matter is, like, as much as I overlook it, like when you're young, you have the world ahead of you. You know, like eat, drink, and be merry. Yes, yeah, like, exactly. More to, there is more to life than bodybuilding, as great as it is. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so. Last time we were on stage, you were significantly smaller than you are now. <laughs> I can't even look back at that, Joey. Oh my gosh! Like, um, you know, we'll we'll plug your Instagram and everything so people can look yeah, back at sure, sure. at younger you. But like, <laughs> like, what'd you weigh on stage? Do you remember? Oh my gosh! Back then, I was like, I want to say, like, I would. I mean, I'm really short too. Like I'm at the time I was like five foot five. I yeah. think I was one twenty eight. Like super duper lean. Like yeah, the weight, man was peeled. I was there. I can testify to that. Mm -hmm. Like you, you wouldn't expect to be placing so well. Like at such a low weight. Like it just doesn't make sense. But, yeah. I mean, I guess it's relative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So talk to me about you know you've you've basically been in off season now since then, correct? Right. Yeah. Um, I've been in off season like 
right now it's been more of a lean bulk just because I've been swarmed with adapting to school and whatnot. Yeah, because like, you're what, in college yeah, now? It happens. But um, the plan right now is to transition into a heavy, heavy bulk and get just absolutely massive just for – I want to do a regional show in the spring and then nationals will be my year this time. Are you going to do Coburg? Um, if it's the first show in the spring, I believe the first national show, whatever that would be. Yeah. Yeah. It's in April dog. Yeah. I think that's the plan. <laughs> oh, I'll see you there. I am hyped. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that's doing, amazing, yeah. That's, bro. that's hilarious. Yeah. That's my first one next year. I got, that's uh, awesome, I got man. like four I'm going to hit. So no way. How, like why four? So this is my game plan. So I did. Like nationals last year, right? And then right. did the whole world's thing in Spain, mm -hmm. which was cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is – so my girlfriend's actually prepping with me. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So, you know, if we don't kill each other by then. Yeah. Um, so she was she wanted to do, uh, you know, that Coburg show. We went and watched it this year just so she could see it live. Right. And, like, I did it in 2016 as well. That was my regional show. And uh, it's a great show. It's gotten bigger since, but it's a really good – and, like, for us, it's close to home, which is nice. Like, it's about 45 yeah, minutes away, sure. right? So it's nice. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I might as well do that show with you because I need to qualify for nationals anyways because I don't know right. how it's all changed. So yeah. Coburg is in April, and then I want to do Toronto Pro. Right. Um, even though it's open, I just, like yeah. – I've always gone to the expo, right. and I want to go on stage. Just, Absolutely. This is like a bucket list thing. So I got to do uh, an open qualifier as well, which is going to be a week, the week after Coburg. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, nationals for um, natural is in August. So yeah. <laughs> if we do, if we do April, then that leaves you till August to, to do nationals. Right. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when, when would you, so if you're heavy bulking, when are you going to start prep? Um, again, it, like I have to see where I'm going to wind up body fat wise this yeah. time around, but the plan is to be he like heavier regardless. So I want to have at least like a, at least like a three, four week prep at least, <laughs> which sounds very minimal, yeah. but that's optimistic for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you weighing right now? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I know I'm in the, I think I'm mid to high one forties. Okay. It, which, like, again, is a significant difference from uh, my last show. Oh, yeah, that's, that's like, 20 pounds, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, at the same time, like, I'm – right now, I'm super diced, so that's got to change. Like, yeah, like, you're, you're, like, <laughs> you're like stage game. ready right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I could step on stage, but – That's crazy. I'm, I want to be bigger, and I want to bring a completely different shape. Yeah. I still feel like I haven't had a heavy enough ball to really transform my physique. Exactly. So that's where I'm going to change it this year. That's sick. Are you going to do physique again? Uh, yeah, the plan is – I think the plan's physique for a while. Like, I like classic physique, but yeah. I'm, I, I think I was born for men's physique. So yeah, yeah. at least until I get the muscularity and learn how to do – hit the poses properly because that's the other thing is – yeah. Those are the rocket science when you've been a men's physique competitor for so long. Yeah, so for sure. adapting to that, it's going to take some time, but eventually I would like to transition into classic. Sweet. That's sweet. So you'll do, what, teen and open again, probably? Yeah, I'd like to do teen for sure. It's just, it's really, really upsetting because my initial plan was to hit nationals this year, but crap came up, crap happens, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, I had to, I decided to step out like I didn't I wasn't even considering prepping at that point for this year's nationals but it just irks me because I think if nationals are in August this year that means I'll be 20 because I turned 19 I turned 20 in July oh shit so I don't think I can do teen which irks me yeah that's annoying well, like, you, can, that you can do juniors though goals, like was to be like the best teen in Canada naturally I don't know but yeah. it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> do what you gotta do eh yeah so when it's you... just funny because um the guy who actually won this year like he's an awesome dude his name's nathan he goes to my high school <laughs> oh yeah what's his name it's kind of like a slap in the face because he goes to my high school but i mean he looked incredible and what's he's his an last awesome name too, so <laughs> what's his last name dude 
Uh, Bernardo. There's oh, two okay. brothers, Devin and Nathan. Yeah, I, I was on stage with Devin <laughs> at, <laughs> at Provincials. Yeah, 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 I remember that too. Yeah, they're freaks, Yeah, he eh? insane. Like, man's got like arms on arms, I would say. Yeah, that's that's like his dad. He's posted pictures with his dad, and his dad's a oh friggin- yeah, they're a whole family of bodybuilders. I think their mom is one too, even like oh or she's done something. It's in the friggin' genes. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, okay, talk to me about you know long term goals. Like, what are you hoping? Like, obviously, again, uh, we mentioned at the beginning, you're only 19, so <laughs> you still have yeah. like your whole career ahead of you. But what do you want to do? Say like you know 20. 2019, what do you hope to accomplish? And then let's say within the next like five years. Okay, that's a good question. Well, honestly, like I, I know I'm only 19. Like you, you probably can imagine how many people tell me that. Like, oh, you're only 19. You have the world ahead of you. Go yeah. drink, do this, do that. You know, like I've heard it so many times. And like I feel like I've been through a lot of so much struggle these past few years, just off season. Yep. And grown through that. I really feel like. I, really, I just want to focus on my bodybuilding, you know, regardless of my age. And the goal, the number one goal is IFBB Pro Card naturally, you know, whatever it takes without having to turn to to the, uh, yeah. whatever you want to call it, Diana Ball. The dark side. The dark side. Yeah, the dark hey, side. Hey, do you get, just quickly, do you get people I'm rag on you for, for being on stuff? Like, when I, uh, who's, <laughs> I who's I showing? I to, you? Um... I get it a little bit, but I, I find as I've gotten older, I, I don't get it as often. When I was 16 years old, I got it all the time because it's like, how can you be this developed at such a young age? But I guess when age catches up with you, it, it's more attainable and realistic. Your yeah. Physique, but I still get it. I'd say I don't really get steroid accusations as much. I get Photoshop more so. Yeah. See, people, I, people are dumb. Like when they <laughs> – like like – when I saw you, you know, recently saw your pictures, like I was like, wow, he's grown. But then you're only 140. Exactly. So and to see you in person, you'd be like, okay, like he's ripped, but he's not a freak, right? Exactly. But like people I see mean, photos. Yeah, I, I look good on the gram, not going to lie. And, yeah, like people like, see photos poses, and they're like. I look anabolic, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, like you got so veins cool. through your shoulders and shit. Like, Absolutely. But when you're a natural bodybuilder and you're just relaxing, like. People could mistake you for a normal human being. That's just the way it is. Oh, yeah. Like, I know when I get down, like, I, I compete at, like, 150. And, like, when I start prep, I'm, like, like this time around I started, I was 176. Absolutely, yeah. And, like, I'd put a T-shirt on and everybody's, like, whoa, like, you're jacked. But then you're right. As soon as you lean down and if you – like, if I wear mediums, they're getting loose on me. And it's, like, did you stop training or what? <laughs> and it's, like, leave me alone, okay? And they just don't understand. They don't understand how preparation works. You know, yeah. it's like it's, sometimes you take it, you take it, and it gets under your skin. But you just have to realize, like, it's just a lack of knowledge, right? And no, exactly. You know, you know what you're doing, and you know when you step on stage, you're going to look amazing. Yeah, my favorite is like the before and after pictures, and everybody's like, "How much muscle did you build?" And you're like, "I lost thirty pounds." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's just some of the questions you get, like. I mean, another one too that I, I always love. It's like, uh, like for I, I love when people ask a bodybuilder, "What's your bench? What's your max bench?" Like, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I have no clue. Never I, even tried it. I don't care. I'm a bodybuilder, and I'm focused on like high volume resistance training. Like last yeah. thing I want to do is injure myself with a strength lift that I've never prepared for in my life. You know? No, exactly. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so when you. Uh, when you make it to nationals this year, because we both know you will, you want that, you want that W or what? <laughs> oh yeah. I want, see the thing that, again, the thing that bugs me, is like, realistically, if I was 19, I would say like teens mine. I need teen. Like I need to take teen. Yeah. That's like, a that's, I can't, ex- if I, if I don't take teen, like, I don't know. <laughs> is teen, <laughs> is teen uh, split up into classes or is it just one class? Um, Teen, no, it wouldn't be split up just yeah. because, like, honestly, like, I'm not, like, trash talking the competitors, but the caliber is, it's a smaller amount of competitors. And yep. A little caliber of competitors just because, like, muscle maturity, right? No, 100%. And, I mean, it, it's just cool to say you've, you've done it, right? And, yeah, exactly. 
So, I mean, it's not the end of the world if that doesn't work out. But if they do have a junior category, which I really hope they'll have. I don't know if they did last year. They, when I did physique. it, they did. Oh, for men's physique? Oh, men's physique. That I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Body, <laughs> bodybuilding the, they did. Yeah, I know bodybuilding. But if they have it for men's physique, then definitely I want, I want to try to take that. Yeah. And we'll see how we do in men's because it, it will be my first national show, even though I've been preparing for it for so long. Yep. See how I place and then make the corrections I need to. And ultimately, the goal is the pro card, right? So for sure. however long it takes to get there. And yeah. I have all the time in the world, so. Now, are, are you time. are you uh, sticking to your guns, like staying natural probably long term? Yeah, I would say so. Just because in the long run, like, I, I honestly, like, every bodybuilder thinks about it, right? Like, Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, let's yeah, be honest. Man, <laughs> I, have a, I have a poster of Chris Bumstead, that legendary picture where he's it's from a photo shoot where he's just hitting that front lat spread. And I'm just like... Oh man, like what I would do to look like that. But yep. what I would do to look like that just doesn't include steroids for me, you know? Yep. Like, it's even even if I was to moderate it with a doctor and oh, yeah. take like a minimal dosage, like to, it's just the fact that there are competitors, I know competitors who've made it pro naturally, who've even made it to the Olympia naturally. Like yep. even though that people will debate that. Like yep. I truly believe Aaron Legend's natural after knowing him and like that like I just want to try to make it as far as I can as a natural athlete. That's like, cool, bro. That's incredible. Inspire the rest to do the same because ultimately it's health before sacrifice, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. Like as you as you kind of get more into the sport. Like when I was probably, you know, you're like I'm 24 now, right? It's probably when I was right. 19, 20. I was like, you know, you're at that age where you're like, well, I mean, what could it hurt? Like, how bad could it really be? And it's like. And so it's just that lack of maturity, you know? Yeah, like, and, like, you get you get into the sport over. more and you, you start, you know, your body starts to develop, you know, as time mm-hmm. goes on. And, like, now that I'm at the position I'm at now, like, I would never do it. I'm glad I didn't do it. Absolutely. And just, like, the thing is, too, like, I, I truly believe even if you're to consider taking something like that, you should wait till you've developed as far as you can as a natural athlete because – like you can still progress as a natural athlete. So why, I mean, yeah. people are so impatient. They want the results as fast as possible. Right. So it's like, let's do it now. Let's get it done now. But if you wait and take the time, like if that is something you do want to do, wait and take the time until you've grown and then you moderate it by a doctor, potentially if that's your decision, then yep. at least it's a, a thoroughly thought out decision, you know? Yeah. It's not a, just a, uh... Oh, Throw let's go buy there, some shit just and yeah. stick things in my body and see where the road takes me because that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and like, like I follow so many guys now who are in their 30s and 40s that are like winning pro cards naturally and winning overalls and stuff. And like, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna look like in 10 years? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like, absolutely. I don't, I don't need it now. Like, I, who am I trying to prove it to? Right? If I can get it one day, then that's better than none at all. And they're proving that they can, you know, so it's like, if they can do it, like, there is a chance that you can too, you know, like, you, like, the core, this is where all the corny quotes come in, you know, you yeah. gotta believe, you just gotta try. Yeah, pa- patience and persistence, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And like, a lot of guys, and you know, like, as more information comes out on it, like, a lot of guys are more open to talk about it, and a lot of them regret it later in life, and they have all these health issues, and it's Absolutely. like... Absolutely, even, even bodybuilders who have establish themselves as world champions and yep. Olympians. They say the same thing, you know? Like, what, what does that mean if, like, your most proud accomplishments in the long run are looked back upon as, like, a downfall to your health, you know? like Yeah, like, I, like the biggest thing for me is, honestly, like, if, if uh, you know, later down the line, if I want to have kids and I got to look at my wife and be like, yeah, because I was an idiot when I was 24, <laughs> I can't – you know what I mean? But that's that's literally – I don't think about the, I don't true. think about anything else that's my biggest deterrent is like one day I got to look my wife in the eye and be like yo I can't get you pregnant. <laughs> I can't even imagine and like yeah. you still want to be able to have that option, you know? Like yeah. there's so many risks associated with it especially at a young age. So it's like why these young athletes if you'll call them are <laughs> in competitors at such a young age. It's just I don't know. I can't, I can't fathom why anyone would want to do that. 
it's just not worth the risk in my opinion. No, no, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Rant <laughs> over, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, dude, let's uh let's finish this up with just like a little rapid fire, you know, Q and A. Yeah, some, for sure. some quick question and answers. So what is your go to cheat meal? Um, go to cheat meal, okay. Well that's easy. Pasta with butter. Butter, parmesan, and like when I say butter, I'm talking like two to three cups. <laughs> oh my god. Like when I make my pasta alfredo, you will die. You will need to have an ambulance bed at the ready. I like because it. Because it is two to three cups of butter. It's at least two cups of parmesan, eight ounces pasta. Holy shit. <laughs> Drown that in garlic, dill, onion powder. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting excited, just think about it. See what you did to me, bro. <laughs> I'm corrupt now. But like that's why I don't do it often. Typically I used to actually like beforehand I was doing a lot of my preparations, my cooking with butter. Yep. But I've recently transitioned into like uh, minimal monosaturated fats for like olive oil, a bit of coconut oil, etc. Yep. etc. Yep. But <laughs> if you ask me to make a cheat meal, like that's I do it, it for my friends all the time just to like because I know I can't eat it, but at least I can cook it and smell it and <laughs> bestow <laughs> the bestow it. the pleasure on your buddies, eh? Exactly. That's funny. Um, oh, okay. That's favorite favorite, uh, favorite body part to train? Triceps. Hands Triceps, down. eh? I haven't heard that one okay. yet. Explain. I like the horseshoe. <laughs> Simple uh, as that. Like, I just I love training arms just because like for me, when I train my arms, they just explode like Swole arena, like I, I yeah. feel like the Michelin man after a workout. You know, it, it's such a good feeling. Sleeve busting, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. So on arm day, give me like two to three buy and try movements. You're always gonna do. Always gonna do my absolute favorite things. If I can, oh, let me see if I can remember it now. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite circuit. I always used to do when I was younger. It was eight reps forearm curls. Okay. And then bicep twenty ones. Yep. Thirty dips. So that's a set, that's triple a set, set okay. two-minute reps. Do that three to four times. I love that. The pump you get is just, oh, man. I, I, it's just unreal. You just blow up. It's great. <laughs> My favorite is uh, you take a buy and try, right? So you superset. First set, 20 reps. Second set, 15, 10, and then five. So you got four sets total. Right, so you're stripping. <laughs> yeah, so you start with like high rep lightweight and then you kind of get up to like a heavy set of five right just sure. hit like three or four superset by try oh man <laughs> arms are blown up it's a good feeling like that's why arms are so fun to train because like when when they're pumped up and like you have these two giant croissants that are just hanging down yeah you're like, like damn from your body the the confidence <laughs> yeah no really doubt makes. what about oh, least <laughs> least favorite body part to train Least favorite body part to train. Hmm. Or like the like obviously we like to train everything, but what's the one that you're like, man, it's whatever. For me, it's not a particular part, it's particular movements. Like I'm honestly I hate doing compound movements because I'm just not I suck at them. Like I just can't seem to get stronger in my compound movements, you know. Oh, okay. It, it's always been a struggle for me, but I know that once I like practice those movements and work all the strong is your weakest point in a range of motion right yeah so i work those weak ranges i know i can improve the strength in those motions and actually execute the movements better it's just going to take practice and i'm more used to high volume machines and like dumbbell barbell style training yep so cool um what uh what was i just going to say least favorite body part favorite body part what's uh What's like a typical workout length? Like, are you are you in there for you know hour and a half, two hours? Or are you pretty um, quick with no, it? No, uh, actually, like I, an hour at a stretch because yeah, me too. Like, it's anything past that, it's not productive. Like, yeah, you've already broken down the muscle tissue. Lactic acid is building up. If you're efficient in the gym, you do not need more than, and you really don't need more than over an hour, like or an hour really. You can get everything done in that short span of time. Yeah, that's like like my my, my <laughs> longest workout is is legs, and that's even then. Like if I'm an hour and a half, that just means I took longer rests. But you're Absolutely. right, you're right. Yeah. Like an hour is my sweet spot. And the legs again is one of those bigger groups, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You don't need to waste. Like it's just not efficient at that point. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, next one. What is your biggest pet peeve in the gym? Mm, biggest pet peeve in the gym. That's a tough one. That's going to require some thinking. But <laughs> I think the worst thing is, especially because when you're in a when you've been training for so long and your workouts are so advanced and you require X amount of machines <laughs> yeah. and you're trying to machine hop and then you're right about to like hit up that peck fly or whatever and someone just swoops in and takes it and it's game over. And so you're just like the look of disappointment on, my, on your face. It's just like, oh, I see how it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that. That or, um, I mean, just... That lack of experience is always – it's not a pet peeve per se, but it's always entertaining. Oh, it's yeah. always entertaining. When you see someone pick up two uneven dumbbells or <laughs> there was one guy like passed out falling asleep. Like, he fell asleep on like a shoulder press machine. Like, oh, my God. It's just the greatest things that go on in my gym. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> what, uh, what are like the you know one or two biggest factors that keep you motivated? What keeps you plucking away every single day? What well, keeps me what, well, the biggest thing? It's like if I didn't do this, what would I do? You know. Okay. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Like if I didn't have body bodybuilding's, it, there should be more to life than bodybuilding. But bodybuilding is my core identity. So if I were to not bodybuild, then I'm stifling my core identity. So that's the way I look at it. There's that, and just the fact that. The competitions edge like they're always right. They're one step behind you, you know. Like, yep. Even like even if you could be head and shoulders above the competition, in my eyes, like the competition is one step behind me. You never know who's going to show up on that stage, so you always need to be prepared and bring your best, right? And that requires like that requires dedication as long and consistent as you can possibly keep it. That's sweet. That's cool. Good. Good outlook, bro. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, last one. What are your biggest, you know, one or two pieces of advice for the the up and comers like yourself? Up and comers. <laughs> hmm. Biggest pieces of advice. Honestly, the biggest pieces of advice would be you need to find a way, whatever that way is, to enjoy the process. Yep. If you don't enjoy the process, you can't make gains. If you're stressed out, you won't make gains. If you have personal issues in your life, you will not make gains. And that's something like I've really learned over the past few years. It's maintaining like a balance between bodybuilding holistically with the rest of your life. If your life is in check, your bodybuilding will be so much easier to keep in check from head to toe, from diet to training. For know? sure. It's all about keeping your life in check. That's what I believe at least. That would be the biggest piece of advice. Nice. That's a good way to end that, dude. Solid. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, quickly plug your Enjoy Instagram all and all that good stuff. Where can people oh, find yeah, you? For sure. Throw it, throw it up there, bro. Oh, throw it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, how would I do that? <laughs> oh, just I'll, I'll type it up on screen, but just just let people know what your Instagram is and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It's Joey. It'll be Joey's physique. Joey's dot physique. Sweet. So with a in between. So this man <laughs> is. Uh, Sounds like he's gearing up for next April, so everybody go follow him and, and watch the shreds begin. <laughs> That's sweet, bro. All right, man. This was great. I appreciate you coming on to the podcast, and we will uh, we will talk soon for sure. Absolutely, bro. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. No problem, man. Uh, if I don't see you before April, I hope to see you there. Oh, well, I'm sure we will, bro. We'll link up for sure. <laughs> All right, man. You have a good rest of your day. Take care, man. See you, bye.